And as this video is just going to show how to finish off the question we were looking at in part one. And all I've left to do now is the actual circle. So what we do is we divide the circle into a number of equal parts, either using our 30 60s or taking the radius on our compass and swinging it from the four corners where we divide the circle into four parts. After that, we then take a piece of paper, and this is the easiest way to actually do it, is to apply our heights onto it. So for example, we have 3, 2, 4, 1, 5, 0, 6, 7, 8, and 9 marked out on that piece of paper there. What I do is I then take that and apply it to my view here so I can take my heights across. So I have to measure them over and over again. After that, the method is the exact same as any other point. We take them all in to where they meet each other at 30 degrees. So, for example, 9 will be taken in and 9 will be taken in at 30 degrees and where they meet will be 0.9 on the question. So I show them there in red, the example for 8. So 8 is taken in in red there and 8 is taken in in red there. And I've just shown how to get 9, 8, 7 and 6. There's just me getting the rest of the points then, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Notice how I'm taking all points in and taking them in both sides at 30 degrees and then marking them off and labeling them so I know which point is which. After that, I can then draw my curve nice and neatly in a continuous motion, not stopping and starting and having it going all over the place. After that, then I'm showing how to get my tangent edges. So you can see there, for example, because I take it in 30 degrees this way, I take a line to the center at 60, and that will give me my extreme edges of the curve there. So if I just go back, there and there, and I take them in at 30 degrees as well, and that gives me my tangent edges 